What's happening? Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com Coming to you today to talk about how to get what you want out of life. Now, this is a topic that I've covered before in terms of how to think like an investor. You know, I've had a number of, of different videos and articles on goals. But what I really wanted to put together was a multi-step, uh, multi-phase um, action plan for you to be able to plug in any type of variable, any type of uh, goal that you want to hit and have a linear action step-by-step -step plan to get that. Some of my art other articles and videos on goals have been motivational. Um, my one on thinking like an investor covered a lot of other different concepts. This is just basically like a blank slate action plan for plug in what you want and this is how to get it, okay? And it's, it's going to come through three different phases. Some of this stuff you might have heard before in some of my other articles, but a lot of this is, is new. It's coming to me. I'm backwards engineering all the stuff that I'm doing. I'm super inspired right now, so I've got a lot that I want to get out. Um, so there is a lot of new stuff in here, and this is a bit of a longer video for you. So just try and absorb what I'm, what I'm coming with, okay? And it's going to be in three different phases. The decision-making phase, the bulking phase, and the maintenance phase, all right? So from start to finish, this is how to get anything that you want, all right? You just plug in whatever variable you want, this is how to do it, okay? So first one is the decision phase, all right? Decision phase. Number one thing you have to do in the decision phase is choose the goals that solve your pain points, okay? This is something I've talked about a lot. So I'm gonna go over it real quickly. You can check out a lot of my other videos on, on this one, but basically it works out like this. There are only 24 hours in a day, eight of them you're sleeping, the other four or five you're doing maintenance, like grooming and traveling and chores and all that bullshit. So I mean, you really have like seven or eight legit hours for getting stuff done. And in terms of energy levels, six of those are really your your good energy levels all right that's the that's the little window that you have to get your shit together and to get your stuff done all right you have way less time than you think you do and life is shorter than you think it is and in those major areas your prime time is like 20 to 45 in terms of energy levels all right and even then at 34 i, I noticed you know there's a decent difference between my energy at 34 than it is at 24. Okay, I can keep my energy higher at 34, but I have to do a lot more stuff. I have to stay a lot more focused on diet, on sleeping, on getting up early, and all these other things to be able to sustain that energy. All right, So that's very important. And since the goal of life, your main goal, your primary priority, is your happiness. Okay, You hear me talk about this a lot, and you're going to hear me keep talking about it. Because that's what we do everything for. You need to choose goals that are going to solve your pain points, all right? Your pain points are what keep you from living a happy lifestyle. Therefore, the most logical thing to do is your goals should solve your most painful problems, all right? And the most, the goals that you put the most effort into are the goals that, that solve your most painful areas in your life, okay? You, that, that will give you the best return on investment in your happiness. You know, you're not you're not spending all your time solving goals that are gonna um, you know that have that are little pain points in your life, right? You wanna spend the majority of your time solving the fucking big goals, you know, the most painful ones. Stuff like being broke, okay? That is very painful. That hurts you in every way in your life. Okay. In my opinion, the big ones, the big pain points are always wealth, health, relationships, and lifestyle. Okay. Personal development industry is founded on those four areas. Every personal development program is based on those areas because that's where everyone's in pain. Okay, those four areas, and in my, it's my opinion that you that it's those four areas uh, in order: wealth, health, relationships, lifestyle. That is assuming that you are a guy from 18 to 35, which is 90% of my readers, and you are in decent health already. Okay, you might be a little bit overweight. You might not be in the gym all the time, but you don't have a major health problem. If you have a major, major health problem, then health has to be number one. But 
Otherwise, I recommend wealth as number one, okay? Because wealth has the biggest return on in your investment, okay? Wealth will help your relationships, all right? It will help your health. It will help your lifestyle. It will help your stress levels. It will help. I've been poor and I've, I've had money, and I can tell you it is the biggest difference of all four areas is getting money. It is just the, the way that our society is structured. There is not one area in your life that having money will either solve that pain point or significantly reduce that pain point, okay? Big, big, big thing. Um, you know, getting control of your own resources, getting control of your own time, all comes in that wealth bracket. Now, if you're really, if you're over 30 like I am, or you're 30 to 35, you already probably agree with what I'm saying. If you're a young guy, I'm talking to the future self. Okay, I'm talking, you cannot see it, that it's your most painful thing, but you will see it when you're 30 and you're working a job that you hate and now it's, and you you need to get out right now because you hate it so much, but because you hadn't built that business, you're two or three years away from getting out of that job when you're already at like the critical pain point, okay? I am talking to your, the older version of yourself. If you're 18, all you're thinking about is girls, 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 girls. Just like I was and just like everyone else is at 18. And I've had, I've been at points in my life where I didn't have any girls and I've been at points where I had a lot of girls. I've been, been at points where I was broke and been at points where I had a lot of money, okay? Having a lot of girls and having a lot of money, money hugely trumps that, hugely trumps that. Because you can be a super stud on the weekend but it doesn't matter when you gotta go work 50 hours a week at your sales job and you hate your life 50 hours a week, okay? It doesn't matter how much of a stud you are on the weekend because you don't have control over your time, you don't have control over what you do, and you don't have control over your resources. They can just, you know, in any sales job, you're two or three months away from getting fired, all right? You can make a lot of money and you can get your exit plan out. I got a book on how to do that. It's called How to Sell. It's what I did. However, it is not a fun way to live. So that's number one in the decision phase. Number two is reality check. Again, this is stuff you might have heard before, but basically what it is is you need to model success. You need, you need to be able to see someone who's been successful and model it, all right? Model it is, is the quickest way to success because you phase out all his mistakes. He beta taste, tested all the mistakes for you and all you have to do is just do, do what he did, okay? A large part of my site is trying to do that. I made so many fucking mistakes in my 20s. I want to just give you the playbook so you don't have to do that, okay? Doesn't matter if you're modeling me, you can model anybody, all right? Just as long as it's, you reality check it. And by reality check, I mean use deductive reasoning, okay? Deductive reasoning means take away, is, is analyze what, he, what he's done to be successful and then start taking parts away from it and see if you have it, all right? Brad Pitt, before he was famous, was probably really good with money because he looks like Brad Pitt, okay? But you have to factor the fact that he looks like that into his success with women, all right? If he's a really good looking guy, you know, you know, and he's uh, teaching you how to get laid, you're, and you're an average looking guy, you're not going to get the same results. You're, you'll get, you might get results, but you're not, you're going to get results within your league, okay? So you have to reality check where you are. In, when you're setting a goal, okay? And the same goes for, let's say you want to model Brad Pitt's career. That's pretty fucking hard because that guy's incredibly socially intelligent. He's, he's one of the best looking guys on the planet. You know, he had incredible luck. All these different factors um, that came into it. But you can, if you want to model his style, you can do that 100%. You can go through the lookbooks, you can find what his style is, you can find low cost options for that, and it's very easy. My style guy is uh, Jason Statham. You can see, we've got the same hair pattern going on here. Um, you know, and, and as I've got older, you know, his style is, is, you know, with my hairline and the shaved head and, and being a bit in shape, that's, that's a good pattern for me as I'm, as I'm hitting my mid thirties. Okay, but you, you can find your own. But model that shit, all right? If you want to create Facebook, okay, you want to create the next Facebook, you got to have a Mark Zuckerberg IQ, 
at the plus a bunch of other things, plus a bunch of investor money and all kinds of crazy shit. Okay, so like you got to factor all that shit. Is this realistic for me? And I'm telling you this because when when I was in my twenties, I was not realistic. I was insanely positive and like I could do anything. And I I wasted so much time and money on trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay, let me give you shortcuts to success. Don't reinvent the wheel. Follow a proven path, follow a well-worn path, and just do it fucking better than everyone else. Work harder than everyone else, okay? That's it, right? The average real estate agent makes like 40 grand a year or something like that. But they're not making 300 cold calls a day, okay? If you do that, you will make way more than they do. You just outwork them. You outservice your clients, you do more. You just fucking power through and you just do it better and you work harder, okay? Don't try and reinvent the fucking wheel. That is, do the reality check, model the successful guy, and make sure it is within your capabilities, okay? And when you have the proven path, you can see if it's within your capabilities, you can use the deductive reasoning, and you have all the benchmarks along the way. So you read all the books on it, you do all the research, you're not reinventing the wheel, and you know, okay, year one of my service-based business, which is what I recommend for most guys, you you know, okay, I did 40 to 45K, year one, year two, I'm gonna aim for 70K, year three, I'm gonna aim for 100K. Okay, those are realistic benchmarks. You can read about whatever niche you're interested in, copywriting, real estate, whatever it is. Read all the books on that shit. Um, you know, read about sales. You've got all the benchmarks and everything put in place where it's a realistic proven path and it's reality checked, okay? Same goes for any of your fitness goals too, right? Whatever it is in fitness, Look at the guy who has the natural genetic, who's at his natural genetic max, okay? Your buddy who's in good shape. Model him, do what he does. Just make sure that you know that he's not on steroids, okay? Because most most guys who make a living off their body are on steroids. So you have to know that it's in within, within your fucking reality. Reality check that shit, all right? Number three, decision phase still. Aim for 50% 50, 50 of what's possible. Okay, let me say that again because this is something you've never heard before. Aim for 50% of what is humanly possible, okay? Most personal development guys talk about 100%, 110%, and I use that phrase myself too. What I, when I use that though, I just mean that is a phrase in terms of just turning a phrase. I'm just saying like, go hard, do it, okay? I do not mean 100% of your human efforts, okay? This is because a lot of guys don't realize what 100% really is, okay? Working hard at 100% of your capabilities is 18 hours a day. 18 hours a day. That's like four or five hours to sleep and, and you know, maybe an hour and an hour and a half to, to groom and get to work and eat and brush your teeth and whatever it is you have to do. And I'm not joking with you, 18 hours a day. If you wanna be an intern at Goldman Sachs or one of these major investment banks, that's what you can expect. They, hit a, they had a kid die last year at Lehman Brothers or one of the other banks. He was 17, they had a, he worked three hours, three days in a row, day and night, and he fucking died. And they had to institute a policy where 17 hours was the maximum, right? 17 hours now is the maximum. Right before that, it was more. They could have the kids working more than 17 hours a day. Okay, 17, 18 hours a day, that is your 100%. Not 10 hours, not 12 hours, 18 fucking hours a day. That's 100%. That's what you're capable of. All right, that is serious shit. All right, you do not want to work 18 hours a day. I can tell you that. Though I've got all the respect in the world for those kids who are trying out for Lehman Brothers, and anyone who gets through that has my respect. I wouldn't want to do that. And I don't recommend you doing that because you need to have a somewhat of a life now, right? That is 100% living in the future. You need to have, be able to enjoy your life to some degree and not live in complete misery, okay? 50% of 17 hours is eight and a half hours a day, seven days a week, okay? That's 50%. Most people think that's 100%, right? Most people think, oh, I'm working eight and a half hours, I'm working seven days a week. I'm giving it 100%. No, you're giving it 50%. And that's what I recommend. Give it 50%. 50% is sustainable. 50% you can do 
and you can still relax afterwards. You can, you know, recharge and you can do that for 10 years. You can do that for five or six years. Try doing 18 hours a day for five or six years. You're not, you're, you're going to fall apart in every other area, your health, your stress, you know, you're going to be become really fucked up across the board. So you have to factor in your overall lifestyle in terms of this shit too. So recognize that 50% is still eight and a half hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. In the gym, a hundred percent is 90 pounds of muscle. Every single one of you, you can put on 90 pounds of muscle. You just have to max out your genetic potential, which is 45 pounds. And then you have to take TRT and test and DECA and Diana Bowl and EQ. And that will get you to like 65 pounds or 70 pounds. Um, but then to get to the next level, you need the insulin and the IGF-1 and the HGH and some of those guys are using like inhalers and the caffeine and the ephedrine and the fucking everything. You know, what is, what is a guy who has 90 pounds of muscle on? He's on everything, right? I'm not talking about the fitness model. The fitness model's got 70 pounds or, you know, 65 pounds. And he's just doing tests year round. And then he's taking a few cycles of like, um, you know, DECA and trend and whatever. But the 90 pound monster is on all kinds of crazy shit. And you can get that body too. You just have to take an insane amount of dangerous fucking drugs. Okay? Insane amount of dangerous drugs. And the reason I say 50% is the sweet spot. Okay? 50% is the sweet spot in terms of success. Because after that, it becomes either diminishing returns, whether where you're putting in a lot of effort, but you're not getting back the rewards that is worth the effort, counterproductive returns, okay, if you're walking around with like 100 pounds of muscle, you will actually put off a lot of girls because you're going to be too big. If you're walking around with 70 pounds of muscle and you're and you look like a fitness model on the cover of a fitness magazine, you're going to get a ton of girls. But once you start getting into like that huge bodybuilder, you know, 100 pounds of muscle, you're going to actually start putting off women where it's counterproductive. Or dangerous returns. You are fucking rolling the dice with your body when you start fucking around with insulin and all that shit. No disrespect to, to any of those guys who are competitive bodybuilders. Anybody who has the discipline and, and takes the risks to get what they want has my respect. I'm not a hater. I'm just saying I don't recommend that lifestyle. Okay? Um, instead, okay, instead of 100%, which is 90 pounds, do 50%, which is 45 pounds of lean muscle. You can, most, some of you can do that naturally. I got up to like 38 pounds of lean muscle naturally with TRT. Got me to about 45 pounds. Um, not advocating TRT. Check out my video on my experience with steroids and what I recommend. I'll never give you permission to do them. I'm just saying 45 pounds, um, a lot of you guys can get that naturally. And that's 50%, okay? 90 pounds. 100% way too much. It's going to be counterproductive. It's going to be diminishing returns. It's going to be dangerous returns. Another example is 100% fashion. Okay, 100% fashion is you are wearing a $10,000 custom tailored suit on a Sunday. You ever see these motherfuckers wearing a custom tailored suit on a Sunday so they can go to Starbucks and stunt? I mean, you look ridiculous. You or like. You're mowing your lawn on a Sunday, you're wearing a custom tailored suit. That's 100%. That's like, that's like full on fashion, okay? It's full on fashion and your suit costs $10,000. You're spending a fortune on fashion and it's got to the point where it's counterproductive, where people are gonna be asking you, why are you wearing, why are you wearing your suit on Sunday morning? Or, you know, why are you mowing your lawn in your fucking custom tailored suit? Or you grow one of these giant beards that a lot of guys are growing, okay? No disrespect if you have one of those beards, but that puts off like 50% of girls, okay? Yes, it's fashionable, but right away, 15% of girls are like, yes, girls like beard and a little bit of stubble, but 50% of girls are going to be put off by that giant fucking beard. You're fashion forward, you're 100% there on fashion, but now it's become counterproductive, okay? The same goes for 
um, going 100% in on a niche, okay? If you're going 100% on a niche, let's take, you know, the niche where you got the sleeve tattoos all the way down, you got the spacers, huge spacers in your ears, okay, yes. For the 1% of girls who are in your niche, you are more attractive to them. But for 99% of the other girls, you become less attractive, okay? You become less attractive because you're so polarized. And then you gotta think about, you know, you're gonna age and you're gonna have the sleeve tattoos and you're gonna age with the big spaces in your ears. And what are you gonna do about that when you're 35 or 40 and you wanna have kids and stuff like that? It is, you've gone 100% and it's become counterproductive, okay? The same goes for like uh, super high fashion. Super high fashion, you're spending an absolute fortune on fashion and a lot of the clothes they wear or they make um, make you maybe come off as effeminate or have someone questioning your sexuality. No disrespect um, to you know any gay people watching. What I'm saying is it is counterproductive. If you are trying to pick up girls and they think you're playing for the team, you are counterproductive. Also, if you're working a job like I did where you know you're in sales or whatever, wearing just a suit that's tailor made makes you stand out because a lot of guys don't dress particularly well. But if you if you've gone like way overboard with it, then the guys that you work with are gonna rip on you, right? They're gonna rip on you for being fashion boy or whatever. And you want to look good, you want to look better than the other guys, but you don't want to go too far where, you know, they're, you become the office punchline type of thing, all right? Now, of course, you don't want to work a job, but while you're working a job, these are things that you got to take into account, all right? So that's the decision-making phase. Part two is the building phase, okay? You made your decision, you've decided what you're going to do, You've decided on the goals that solve your pain points. You've reality checked it, and you've gone into 50% of what's possible. Now you're doing the building phase, and in the building phase, the first thing you want to focus on are focus on the concepts that count. Okay, I'm talking about focus on the big concepts before you start fucking around with the small concepts. If you ever start fucking around with small concepts, okay? Let me give you an example. Take the gym. Here are the big four concepts. Getting adequate protein, which in my opinion is much less than most people say. It's 70 to 100 grams. Um, progressive resistance, which means you're going in and trying to get stronger every week. You're trying to do one more rep. You're trying to get stronger, progressive, progressively get stronger, okay? You get stronger, you will get bigger. When you're bench pressing 250, 300 pounds, you're gonna be very big, okay? Um, you know, getting adequate recovery, caloric surplus, and performance enhancing drugs. Whether legal, like caffeine, or creatine, or other. Again, not recommending any illegal drugs, but I'm saying those are the things that work. Those are the big four, okay? Progressive resistance, adequate protein, caloric surplus, performance enhancing drugs, whether legal or illegal, not recommending illegal drugs. Those are the big four, okay? Worried about meal timing, um, you know, BCAAs during your workout, uh, split sets, or all these, all this fucking white noise. No, you just need to get enough protein. You eat, need to eat slightly more than maintenance. You need to go in to get stronger every week and use whatever drugs are legally available to you or, you know, with doctor's prescription, TRT and stuff like that, or if you're in a country where it's legal. So those are the big four to focus on, okay? Not the fucking little shit. The little shit just gets in your way. I work out fasted every morning. I don't eat till noon. It's made no difference. Made no difference whether I had a meal before my workout or after except that when I worked out before I would actually have less energy because I wasn't on the caffeine and I have more energy when I'm fasting all right you know the exact ratio of food did not fucking matter okay what matters is I just had enough protein and I'm just eating a bit more and that got me to my natural max all right so you focus on the fucking big things another example is blogging when I started out with blogging I didn't know what the fuck I was doing I didn't know 
anything. Looking back, I was so fucking dumb about everything. But I read everything that I needed to know. I read everything, everything, everything. And 99% of it was fucking useless, okay? I can give you the four things that made my, my blog and, and got me to this level were quality content, time, okay? You know, it, Google a lot of the times won't start really ranking your article until two years later, okay? Time is just a factor. Uh, titles, which means that you want to SEO the title as much as possible for what people are searching for. Obviously, not not every article you want to SEO because then it looks like you're just these are clickbait titles. But if you think that your article is something that people would search for, you you check out AdWords and and tweak it a bit to see if you can um, increase the volume of of what people are searching for by by tweaking your title and quantity. Quantity is the one area where I fucked up in until sort of the last couple months or so. Um, because quantity is very, very important as well. So those four things, that's it. That's what will build your blog. That's what will build your personal brand, whether on YouTube or, or anything else. Okay? Those are the big concepts. It is not about um, worry, worrying about timing your newsletter to your 100 newsletter subscribers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even what's in the newsletter doesn't matter that fucking much. It's like a 1% difference to your open rate. Even building a big newsletter is overrated. Building a big site is way more fucking useful than building a big newsletter. All right? Also, your Twitter fans don't matter. I don't think I've sold a book or made any money off Twitter yet. I just use it. I just automatically, uh, from my website to Twitter, send out that one of my articles is out. And then I, I check there once a day to see if someone retweeted or tweeted to me and I thank them or I like their tweets or that's it. It takes me about 30 seconds a day. I don't think I've made any money on it. Like people tell you social media, this and that. For the most part, no, with the exception of YouTube, which I'm talking to you on now, which is fucking huge. So again, big concepts. I spent so much time on little design tweaks and all this stuff that doesn't matter because the people who are telling you how to build a big blog or build, build a big personal brand don't have one. They're just rehashing the shit that they read from somewhere else, okay? And that's like, that's like, for most things, that's where guys get caught up. They get caught up in the fucking white noise because you've got non-experts rehashing other advice from other fucking non-experts, okay? Focus on the big things. Try and simplify whatever it is, whatever goal you're trying to achieve into like the four biggest things and focus on those, all right? Talk about the 80-20 principle, Pareto's law, which is not a law, it's a principle, where 20% of your, where 80% where of your rewards come from 20% of your efforts, okay? Focus on those four things that are the 20% of your efforts that bring the 80% of your rewards, okay? That's the fucking move. And, you know, same goes for lifestyle, okay? Same goes for increasing your quality of life. Move to a somewhere sunny, get up early, less stress, being organized. I wrote a book on that, how to get organized. Gotta love it. Gotta put that in there. And that's, you know, those are some of the main things, okay? Not learning a motherfucking language. I live in a foreign country. I live in Thailand. I don't know any Thai. I know like 10 words. I would like to learn. I would like to be able to speak more than just fucking basic Thai and, and embarrass myself when I try and pronounce shit, but that would be two or three hours out of my fucking prime time, out of those six or seven prime hours a day. That, that will cost me a fortune over my lifetime. That, that will cost me an absolute fortune because it's taking money away from my business. And that especially goes if you live in a country where you're, it's your native language. You know, you've got to be very, very selective about what you do with your prime time, Okay. Which brings me to point number two in the building phase, which is what I call scheduling productivity prime time. Okay, I got this from, this is a book you should really, really read. It's by Gary Keller, who created Keller Williams Commercial Real Estate Brokerage, which is a massive, massive real estate firm. Made a ton of money, wrote a book called The One Thing. And he's taken Pareto's Law, or what I call the Pareto's Principle, the 80-20 Principle, and simplified it down to just one thing. He says, you should spend the bulk of your time on that one thing that is the most profitable or most productive for your business, okay? In my business, that is either getting traffic or releasing products. Those are, for now, my most productive 
um, avenues. Okay, this year, all I'm doing is just building the brand. I'm, I'm getting a, a ton of these videos and articles out in traffic. That's, that's my focus. And the way that you do that, or the way that you maximize that, is you schedule a productivity prime time for your one thing, for the most important thing for your business, or the most important thing for whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Okay? My most productive prime time is 9 till noon in the morning. All right? 9 till noon, after I've done my workout, showered, all that stuff, did all my you know, basic chores for the morning, that's prime time, baby. I have fasted, I've got the caffeine in me, and that is my most energized, most focused time of the day. And that's where I, I focus on my best work, okay? When I was releasing products, that was when I was writing my book. Now it's putting together these videos or doing these videos and doing these, these articles, okay? That's, that's a key. That's a huge key. That will double your income. That will double your income if you if you implement that in a year. And over a lifetime, it will give a massive, massive benefit to your business. Massive. Because three hours of prime time is like worth six hours of average time. You are accelerating so fast and you're focusing on the most important thing instead of fucking around with all these other little things that get in your way. Super, super important, okay? You can check out my article on that, um, which I covered in, in how to make more money. Okay, I get really far into how to use that one thing to make more money. But schedule productivity prime time. And that goes for, you know, your other goals as well, if they're important enough. All right. Number three in the building phase, value momentum over money. Okay. Value momentum over money. Let me give you an example. My oldest friends, his parents are English and Irish. They grew up um, just after, you know, they're baby boomers after the war, where there was not a lot of money, there was not a lot of food, and, you know, they learned how to be, um, you know, very good with money, okay? He will spend money on expensive things, but he value is very, very important to him. Okay, this, 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 he comes from the house where you know you, you can't throw out the food on the table because it, it's value, and he hoards everything because it's valuable. Okay, because he doesn't want to lose the value of that thing. Okay, and I get that. And in a lot of ways, I respect people who who value money and who um, value their things and, and all that. However, for me, momentum is much more important. Momentum is much more important. I can't think of the last time I returned something, and this makes my friend insane, where I'll spill something on a shirt and I'll just throw it out because I don't care. Or like, I buy a t-shirt and then I give it to a person who does my laundry and, and it shrinks and it's too small and I just fucking throw it out because I don't care. Because wasting a whole afternoon going back to return that for like $10 fucks up my whole momentum for the day. I would rather get a video out than get that done. Okay, because that is what it takes to have that. You need to have that tunnel vision to accomplish stuff. Otherwise, it's always going to be something that's throwing you off. It's like, ah, I got to cancel this thing, right? I have some recurring payments when I went through my website optimization every year. There are some recurring payments for stuff that I don't use anymore. That's like a one year, pay, one year, fifty dollars off my credit card. I didn't even bother to get rid of it. Just because it's like the credit card's gonna expire in a year, a year and a half. There'll be another payment another year from now. Just I just wanted to get that fucking thing done. Just get that chore done, okay? So I can go back to my productivity prime time. So I can go back to the important things, okay? Having that the shit that fucks with your momentum. You can lose two or three days um, doing shit that's not very important that fucks with your mo momentum. I'm bringing it back to my friend again, he will spend three days researching or months researching something like a computer to make sure that he gets the best one or whatever, okay? And again, I respect that, but my computer broke, I just bought another one that day. I was just, in my price range, I was like, okay, I'll take that one, that's it. So I can get back and get back to work. It's a big difference, okay? And I value that momentum over money because that momentum gets me money. That momentum gets me money, okay? It, it, the difference between that is the middle class mentality and the I'm going to be rich mentality. The I'm going to be rich mentality has been my mentality since I was young. Okay, even when I didn't have money, 
even when my life wasn't comfortable, that was still like, well, whatever, I'm going to be rich. You know, now I'm not saying to be stupid with money. I'm, I'm still saying to be within your budget or whatever, but don't get caught up in all those little things that get in your way. And that the same goes for like, you know, little things and little obstacles in your business that, that you don't really need. Okay. It's like, okay, your Instagram followers aren't, aren't where you want them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that much. Okay. You're, you're keeping that momentum going. All right. And the reason is your goal should be big enough that you can afford not to do that shit. If you have to do all that little shit, then your goal isn't big enough. Okay. If you're aiming for six figures or a bit more than six figures, you can afford to, you know, not worry about that stuff because you know that you're, you've got the money coming in. All right. I'm not telling you to go crazy with money and, and, and not to respect the value of money, but you can put that stuff off to the side because you value that momentum because you know that the goal is serious enough that when you value that momentum, it will create an abundance of the wealth that you want as opposed to worrying about a dollar here, a dollar there and having that fuck up, you know, spending hours and hours and hours on re of research when you could be putting hours and hours and hours into building your money machine, right? Your, your perpetual money machine, which is what a business is. Okay. So that is the building phase. It's part two. Finally, now part three, which is the maintenance phase. Okay. And again, this applies to whatever you're working on, whatever, goal, whatever it is you want, these three phases apply and all these actionable steps apply. So in your maintenance phase, part one is set it and forget it. Okay. Set it and forget it. Something I covered in my how to achieve your goal series. That was more motivational. I want to really explain what set it and forget it is. Okay. Set it and forget it is your end game to everything. You should have an end game in mind of everything you want to do, okay? Whether it's fitness, whether it's with girls, um, whether it's with business, okay? Fitness, that could be 40 pounds, and girls, it could be a girlfriend, and business, it could be six figures. Those are all very good set it and forget it goals. The important thing is you have an end game so that you know where you're aiming, okay? I call set it and forget it the promised land because that is a point where you start to make what I call neutral decisions to positive decisions. To get to the promised land, a lot of times it takes a lot of negative decisions. By negative decisions, I mean decisions you don't want to make, like in business. It takes a lot of, to get a business up and off the ground, it takes a lot of negative decisions, decisions you don't want to make. Like, I have to make 100 cold calls today. I have to make 200 cold calls today. I don't want to, but I have to do it, all right? Once you've established that, you get to this beautiful maintenance phase where you're like, oh, okay, I can just, I don't have, I can, I can slowly like maintain this here, right? I'm, I'm, I've got where I want to be, all right? I'm there, I'm there, all right? And that's a very, very important thing to remember because we live in this sort of success productivity cult mentality where enough is never enough. You're constantly like, um, on to the next thing, all right? So the guy makes starts making 100, 150 grand, and now he has to get to 300 grand, okay? I get it, man, I'm motivated too, um, but it's like, when is enough enough? You have to also enjoy your life, okay? Because we're talking about happiness. Happiness is the goal. Happiness is the goal, okay? Can you not have the same enjoyable lifestyle on 100 grand that you can on 300 grand? You got to think like, all right, what if I just take this hundred grand, maybe move it online and then dip it somewhere else. Okay. But either way, it's like set it and forget it. Like have the lifestyle that you need and then be happy with that. Be happy with that. Not always looking for like the next thing. All right. And you can aim higher than hundred grand. You can aim for 200 grand or 300 grand, but try and be happy once you get there and be happy with your body. Once you get there, be happy with your girlfriend once you get there and set it and forget it, try and run it on autopilot and try and, and maintain it with the least amount of effort, the least amount of effort. Okay. I would, I could probably maintain my body on like one workout a week, probably. All right. But it, to get there, it took, it took more, it took years of, of 
you know, two to three times a week. So that's where you want to get. Set it and forget it. You got to have that end point where like, man, I'm going to be good and then I'm just going to cruise there. All right. That's the first step. The first step is to be able to get to a plateau where you can breathe and you can be like, okay, I'm here. All right. Let's, I'm in maintenance phase. I'm going to be here. It's good. Next move. All right. Next move while you're still in maintenance phase. Okay. is not necessarily, it's not just Let's get more money. It's leveling up your lifestyle, okay? I'm not saying stop challenging yourself. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying stop challenging yourself. But I'm saying in the maintenance phase, you set it and forget it, and then you work on leveling up your lifestyle, okay? What I mean by that is not only are you just maintaining with less, now you're getting more for less. So when you set it and forget it, you're trying to do as little as you can to maintain. But when you get to level up your lifestyle, you're trying to actually do less and see if you can get more or at least a bit more than you had in terms of lifestyle. So what I mean by that is reducing your hours, okay? So instead of working those seven and a half hours a day, see if you can get it down to five hours a day. See if you can get it down to five hours a day and outsource your headaches. So you reduce your hours and you outsource your headaches. You got a VA, you got a cold caller, you got an agency, and see if you can do that and still make more money, or at least make the same amount of money by leveling up your lifestyle. Okay, I call this the positive decision. Okay, and this is the advanced promised land. The advanced promised land is you got to the top of the mountain and it's on set it and forget it. It's on autopilot. Now you're like, where do I go from here? You can go and keep killing yourself for the rest of your life, um, or you can start living better and maybe even making more money because you're outsourcing your headaches and things like that, and you're focusing even more on your productive prime time, okay? Leveling up your lifestyle so that you get to enjoy your life more. Um, the way I say it is like, luxury is not Louis Vuitton, it's, it's doing what you want. So this is something I touched on in a couple of videos, but for me, this is what I want to do. Talking to you, the creative work. What I don't like doing is uploading videos and editing videos and writing captions on videos and, and articles and back on end projects and marketing and all this fucking bullshit, all right? I only want to do creative work and I'm outsourcing that stuff to the stuff that I don't want to do to other people, okay? For you, it could be, you might not have a business that's as fun, but this is something that I've talked about before where, okay, maybe you're, you've made a service business in copywriting or selling real estate. Now, you get a VA, you get a cold caller. So, you get your hours down at least. The work is not the most creative, but your hours are down. And that gives you time to be able to transform your business, okay? And you can transform your business by productizing your knowledge. Productizing your knowledge means you start selling books and building a brand around success in real estate or success in copywriting, okay? And now you get to do creative work and you get to do work that's more fun and you get to sell a product where you're not selling your time anymore because you've built a service-based business, you've got control of your revenue, you've got control of your time, you've got money to invest in your product-based business, you've got money to buy advertising and marketing, and now because you've reduced your hours, you've got extra time to work on that business. So you're leveling up your lifestyle of luxury. And maybe you're moving, as you're moving that business away from real estate to online, now you're gonna be able to travel more. You're gonna be able to take your money and maybe arbitrage it to a cheaper country. Or if you're in the US, you're gonna take your lifestyle from a cold climate and move it to Arizona or Florida. Level up those lifestyle, level up that you know, the way that you want to live, okay? That's the end game there. That's the end game. So that's the whole fucking game. So you go from the decision phase, where you're choosing what solves your pain point, reality checking it, aiming for 50% of what's possible, then you're building, okay? You're focusing on the key concepts that count, you're scheduling your productive prime time, you're focusing on, focusing on momentum over money, and then you're taking it to the maintenance phase, okay? Which is what I call the promised land, 
or you've achieved it, you're on set it and forget it, you're running on autopilot. Now that you're on autopilot, you get to reclaim your time and you get to outsource your headaches and you get to see how can I make my business or my particular goals more enjoyable. Even with your body, you can do that. You can be like, okay, well, I'm gonna do less weights and more yoga, which is what I enjoy, or whatever it is. You can always find a way to make that goal more enjoyable once you hit um, your level, okay? Because that's what it's all about, is enjoyment of your life. And that is the multi-step action plan that you can plug in any single goal or anything that you want into, and it's gonna be super useful to you. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video on YouTube or checking out my website, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com or my audios on iTunes and SoundCloud. As always, I wish you all the best in your personal development journey.